Um, I'm a member of the Compatible One team. It's a systematic project uh, financed by the Région Paris France. And we were given a very large scope to work within the field of cloud computing to perform research work to come up with ideas in the field of cloud computing, which is a pretty abstract scope. Rather difficult initially to know what we were supposed to do, so we spent quite a lot of time um, in Compatible One with our partners, Activion, Bull, City Passenger, Enavance, Bureva, Mandriva, Nixedi, Nuxio, Prolog, XWiki, Inria, Institute Telecom, OW2, examining all of the open source cloud offerings in the fields of BS, PaaS, and SaaS. We spent several months investigating the current state of open source technology in the cloud field, because Compatible One is an open source project. We have OW2 as a member, and we are currently publishing uh, work that has been performed in the open source. So what is Compatible One? Well, what has Compatible One become would be a better question. Compatible One is about open standards and open source. We've identified a series of open standards which are currently under close examination, notably the Open Virtualization Format, OVF, Distributed Management Task Force, DMTF, Cloud Data Management Interface, the CDMI, Storage Networking Industry Association, the SNIA, the Open Cloud Computing Interface, OCCI, from the Open Grid Forum. Now, we are in close coordination with these different bodies, and we are working with them to find how we may use their offerings and their standardizations and their specifications in building a, dare I say, master plan. Um, the final one, OCCI, is something which has retained our attention because of its current state, which is very simple, and its current state, which is very powerful. Now, these open standards, having identified them, we firmly believe in the need for open source, for the adoption of open standards, to permit open innovation, and to create an open ecosystem around cloud computing principles in France, in Europe, and internationally. Why? Because really, as we heard earlier on from the European Commission, interoperability is not negotiable. Interoperability is what will allow it to happen and to continue happening. So, I move on to the diagram of the architecture of Compatible One, which uh, some of you may have seen already, some of you may be familiar with. It's four quadrants which represent, in some ways, four of the actor agents of the NIST report. We are well familiar with the work of NIST. We have a fifth plane which is currently invisible, which is that of the monitoring. However, in the first realm, or the first quadrant, we have the user interactivity, whereby the user of the platform specifies their requirements in terms of a CODES document, Compatible One Resource Description, Shima, document describing the infrastructure they require. This is presented as a manifest and enters the second quadrant, which is the realm of Validation, number two. Going around in a clockwise fashion. Okay. So, in the second quadrant, we have the chords parser. is responsible for the passing of the manifest, the validation, XML syntactic validation, schema conformance validation, and infrastructure feasibility. 
By feasibility, the parser will analyze the document and localize eventual service providers within the Accords platform community capable of understanding and providing for the terms described within the manifest. And if this process completes successfully, it will leave a fully qualified provisioning plan. So, from the manifest, through the parser, we produce a provisioning plan. The provisioning plan is somewhat like a blueprint. You have an idea for a new house, with like a huge bathroom and a big living room with a huge television, and you basically got the ideas of how you want to live. So you submit that to an architect, and he will devise a plan whereby the technological constraints are respected to provide you with this dream house. So here, this plan contains the information required to achieve the infrastructure described by the user or the initiator within the manifest. This plan provides entry into the third quadrant, which is the realm of the broker. The broker, we can see he is accompanied by a collection of compatible one services. This is not an exhaustive list of services. These are currently service components which have been foreseen within the compatible one group, providing service to the cords broker. We can find Kubas, compatible one, ordering, billing, and accountancy services. We can find COES, compatible one, elasticity, scalability services. Commons, the compatible one, monitoring services. Conets, the compatible one, network services. Coes, compatible one, energy efficiency services. EasyVM, VM, creation assistance services. Unidata, unification of data storage and blob storage for the EasyVM. And the pass for dev, the OSGI interface management. These are services which will assist the broker in the provisioning operations required when using a plan. Now the aim of this architecture is to provide an industrial means for the provisioning of well-described infrastructure configurations. And by industrialization, I mean that one plan can give rise to many different instances of the same plan, in the same way that once we've built a blueprint for a McDonald's restaurant, we can actually build a McDonald's restaurant of the same kind in every town. That might sound rather like a joke, but when you look at the enterprise requirements, whereby we have employees of different categories, administrative staff, and we'll have development teams, we'll have commercials, we'll have management, we'll have upper management, each will have a different infrastructure and application requirement profile. Each of these different employee profiles will give rise to a different kind of manifest and consequently a provisioning plan to provide the infrastructure that they require to perform their daily day-to-day -to -day work. As a new employee arrives, he will arrive with a certain category and for the creation of his computing needs, they will simply invoke an invocation of provisioning of their plan type. Now, this broker in quadrant three will build a provisioning control graph. He will negotiate with the carriers the availability of resources and build this instance control graph, which once built will then, through the cords proxy, be instanced. And the cords proxy will negotiate the placement and the provisioning of the resources required to fulfill the needs expressed within the manifest and qualified within the plan. And this will be delivered to the user in the form of a service. This is the current state of the Compatible One architecture at the end of the first year. Below it, we can see the lower bar, the carriers, 
This is the operators. It's one of the actors in the, the NIST scenario. It is a region in which we are not performing work. However, it's mentioned on the schema, just such that it be clear. Now, Compatible 1 is currently capable of provisioning on both Open Nebula and OpenStack platforms. In the fourth quadrant, we can see several satellite services, which are the actual platform provisioners. We have a concept of a proxy, which is a OCCI proxy, because the entire architecture has been built on standard, loosely coupled, OCCI REST API interfacing. And consequently, every single component communicates with the other components through these REST OCCI interfaces. Just above the plan, we can see the knowledge base, which is the collection of the information maintained within the system. Above it, COS, the Compatible One Security Services, because, of course, the system is highly security conscious. Everything is performed using transport level security, transport layer security, and each component in the system is required to obtain and present its own identity certificate and be authorized to use the system. Above the security services are the publication services, which provide the repository services for connection between the components. Initially, we imagined a service bus. We played with many ideas about service buses, and in the end we realized that the service bus was not necessary. We don't have services buses between ourselves, do we? When we talk, we know with whom we need to talk, and we connect with them. And the compatible one service bus is the collection of the interactions between the components, which interconnect with each other as they require and search for and discover service through the publication mechanisms. Here we have a logical view of the, dare I say, taxonomy or <coughs> nomenclature, to use the German word that uh, Rainer used this earlier on. Um, it, as I said, it is based on the OCCI cloud computing interface, which provides us with four very simple concepts for the description of almost anything. An entity, which derives to provide resource, link, and mixing. Below that, the OCCI OGF group defined three basic elements, network, compute, and storage. Additionally, storage link and network link. Now, the entire Compatible one, a resource description, schema, has been built on top of this. Each of the blue boxes represents a category, and a category is a resource. And so it is completely compliant with an OCCI interface and an OCCI description understanding mechanism. In the OCCI protocol, there is a capabilities discovery request which allows any client to discover the categories of service that this OCCI server is capable of delivering. Each of the components in the previous architecture provided for a collection of these OCCI categories of service. Here we have the logical descriptive view of how the manifest is organized internally to give rise to the plan 